Hello everyone. I'm here to report on the latest statistics that are coming out uh, recently. And last Friday, the Bureau of Labor Statistics put out their uh, employment report. And the employment report comes out the first Friday of every month and it reports on the previous month. So the report that came out last Friday reported on January. So this is a very timely report and it's very important because so much economic activity is tied to the labor market. And so what did the Bureau of Labor Statistics report? Well, it was a very good report for the U.S. economy. Uh, it reported that on in January, non-farm payroll employment, now non-farm payroll employment, that kind of is what it implies, it's looking at the, the urban market for work, on net, 517,000 jobs were created in January alone. Now, that's a big number. Uh, now, that number can fluctuate from month to month. So what the Bureau of Labor Statistics does and what some economists do is they take a three-month moving average. Uh, so the three-month moving average for payroll employment increased to 356,000 jobs per month from last month, which the three-month moving average was uh, only 291,000. That's those are good numbers. Now you could see here, I've got briefing.com up, and you could see the that number that I just gave you, 517,000. That's right here, but it's very difficult to gauge that number because of these huge uh, divergence during COVID, and that ruins the vertical axis here. So what I can do. As I could scroll down here and I can go to this chart, which is a lot better because it stops January uh, 2021 and it avoids those gr those gyrations during uh, 2020. And you can see here, this is 517,000 jobs. Now, th the important thing to remember here, let me just draw a little line here, uh, right here. I'm going to draw a line right about 200,000. I'm just trying to draw the straightest line I can, so bear with me. Okay, now why did I draw a line of two, uh, at 200,000 jobs? Because the, the, uh, the rule of thumb here is the United States has to generate at least 200,000 jobs a month just to accommodate new people coming into the labor force or people re-entering the labor force. So in other words, if we didn't have 200,000 jobs, uh, people would come in and they wouldn't have uh, jobs available and you would see the unemployment rate go up. And you could see here how many months have been above this 200,000 mark. And basically we've had a string of uh, well over a year of 200,000 plus jobs every month. That's really good news. Now. On the flip side, there was concern about a hot job market that could spark inflation. Well, we've had inflation because if it's driving up, if workers are more scarce, wages will be bidded up, which is a good thing, but it also increases uh, the cost of doing business. And the fear is that will be pushed through into higher prices for goods and services. Um, and that's one of the driving factors for inflation. But one of the other uh, statistics that the Bureau of Labor Statistics reports on is uh, average hourly earnings. So let's take a look at that. Let me just um, go back to up here. Exit drawing. Okay, so right here. So average hourly earnings right here. Now, the, the good news in a way is the growth. So this is the year on year percent change. The growth in hourly earnings is uh, slowing down and that should cause easing pressure on inflation, at least from the employment side uh, related to consumer inflation. So this is actually really good news. Um, the unemployment rate itself, as you can see here, is fallen to a very, uh, basically, a 50-year low, 3.4%. Uh, 
So this is a really good sign for the U.S. economy. Uh, now, one of the assignments I had in my macroeconomics class is I was asking students to try to uh, determine what stage of the business cycle do they think the United States is in right now. And some have been uh, saying that we're kind of in or coming out of a contraction phase. Now, one of the things you can do is look at data like this to try to confirm what stage of the business cycle you're in. And the reason why I say that, let me go to uh, another site. This is called FRED, Federal Reserve Economic Data. Let me go to it right now. Okay. And here I'm looking at the same data we just saw in the previous graph. This is non-farm payroll employment. And again, it's very difficult because of these spikes in um, because of COVID. So if I could shorten the, the time frame here, now you could see here, this is that 517,000 jobs that were created in January. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is the nice thing about this site is if I show you this graph, these shaded areas are periods where the economy is actually contracting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of avoid the COVID part. And you could see here that whenever the economy, so right here, let's take a look at the, the recession that has started in July 1990. That's when the economy started to contract in terms of economic activity, GDP. And you could see immediately we started to get negative job growth. So you could see in the first month of a recession, we had a, uh, a negative 34,000 jobs lost, right? And then it got at its worst, it was, we lost in one month, 319,000 jobs on net during that recession. And take a look at the dot-com bubble bursting here. Uh, at its worst, we were losing um, 313,000. And take a look at COVID. At, at its worst, we were losing 800,000 jobs a month. So what I'm the point of this is when the economy is in a contraction phase, you expect job growth to be negative. And you could see here, it's been positive since uh, March 2010. So that kind of tells you that we can't be in a contraction phase because you don't have positive job growth when the economy is in recession. So uh, hopefully this kind of gives you a deeper perspective uh, in terms of what's happening in the economy and with this latest employment report. That's all for now.